If I asked you to rank the gear that makes the biggest contribution to a good score at a high power match, what would your list look like? You would probably put rifle and ammunition at the top of that list. After all, it's hard to shoot a good score without them. What will be next? Maybe the sling? Not using a sling is certainly going to cost you plenty of points. Now your list could probably go in several different directions. Maybe you would choose a spotting scope. Or maybe your shooting coat makes the list here. Well, for me, I would never want to go to a match without my data book. Sometimes mistakenly called a scorebook, my data book is the key to the zeros for my rifle. Those zeros are the pieces of information that make the difference between winning a match and just muddling through the day on the range. I could make a separate video about the subject of zeros, but for right now, I just want to explain how I use my data book to track zeros and what information I write down. Earlier in my high power career, I was told to buy and use a data book, but nobody really told me how to use one. So I started using the Creedmoor books. I reasoned that more data must be better, so I would try to write in as much information as each page asked for. This meant I was spending lots of time filling in for information on shot calls, temperature, lighting, and wind. But as I progressed in the sport, I realized that these data books were asking for information that was unnecessary, and they lacked information that I did want to record. More and more, I came to the conclusion that everything that I enter should work to refine my rifle zeros for each stage of the course of fire. A more efficient method would be to design and print a data book with only the information that I felt was needed to help me shoot better scores. Since slow fire zeros and rapid fire zeros require different information, I use two different types of data pages. Let's start with slow fire. All the commercial data books that I've seen have shot plotting areas for slow fire. I won't bog down this video with my methodology of acquiring slow fire zeros, but I will say that plotting individual shots doesn't add any value for me. Instead, I simply have a page where I can put a season's worth of matches. The information that I want to capture differs slightly for standing and for slow prone, so those pages are a little bit different. In standing, I will write the date and range location before the match starts. Then I will scan my previous strings of standing zeros to see what the best starting site settings would be. Early in the season there isn't much data to go on, but I can still get a good gauge of how much to turn the knobs for the first shot. As I shoot, I will adjust the elevation and windage on my scope to account for any differences between actual location on target and my mental shot call. For example, here I fired the shot and immediately had a call in my head. Looked at the spotter location in my spotting scope and decided to adjust one click to the right. By the time I finish the string, the holes in paper should match up to my call. I then take the settings off the scope, adjust for any environmental factors, and write down that day zero on the line with my score. If warranted, I will also make any notes relevant to shooting that day. These comments can be just about anything that I considered unique at the time, but something that seems significant at the moment can be trivial when viewed in context. For example, I shot the National Trophy team match on August 5th. After standing, I not only noted my poor trigger control and a high and right natural point of aim, but I also recorded that I had lots of anxiety when shooting. This was a useless notation, though, as I have been anxious every one of the 20 times I have fired this match. The page for 600 yards slow fire prone follows the same pattern as standing with one notable exception. One harbinger of a poor prone string is having to keep adjusting my elevation early on. This can manifest itself with an off-center first shot, low for example, then clicking up on the scope, shooting a high second shot, clicking down, etc. etc. I wanted a way to capture this information to look for trends. 
Each entry has a space for recording the elevation setting when I fired the very first shot as well as the result of that first shot. In this example in late June, I fired my first shot with an elevation of 59 clicks. The result was an X at 3 o'clock. I went on to only drop one point with 50% Xs and my elevation finished at the same point that it began. Contrast this with a match early in September at the same club where I fired my first shot at the same 59 clicks of elevation. This time that initial shot netted an 8 up high at 12 o'clock. After dropping 4 points by the end, I wound up 4 clicks lower at 55. While my slow fire data sheets only require some basic information to track my zeros, rapid fire needs a bit more data. My data sheets for sitting and rapid prone are almost identical except for the scale of the plotting areas, so these comments will apply to either stage. The feedback we get on each shot in slow fire makes attaining a zero a step-by-step -step process at each match. The results for rapid fire, on the other hand, are received 10 shots at a time. So for me, plotting the entire group and basing a zero from that outcome makes sense. The first things that get filled out on these pages is the housekeeping data, such as date, range location, upper receiver number, firing point, and relay. Most of the time I try to fill in this information before I get to the line. Additionally, I will review my previous data sheets for the same stage to determine what my rifle no-win zero is. This is usually the new zero from the last time I shot this stage, but it's good to review a little further back to get a sense for, the, for any zero drift that might be taking place. I will write this starting point in this box. Now I take my firing point and array my stuff with my data book within reach. I will put my zero on the scope at some point during this process. After the preparation period, I judge the environment and determine what my sight setting should be for the first sighting shot. If things are pretty calm, I will just go with my no-win zero. In other situations, I will adjust accordingly. My preference is to have the proper correction on the gun at any given time. Before firing my first sighter, I write down the sight settings on this line. As soon as I fire that first sighter, I note my shot call using two designations separated by a slash. The first designator is the scoring ring, and the second is the clock position. The numeral 1 is plotted at the actual shot location, and I now decide whether a sight adjustment is necessary. When I determine the sight settings for the second sighter, I ensure they're on the rifle, write these on the S2 line, and fire again. Even before the target comes up, I have my call written down. When the target is in the air and I can see the spotter, I write a 2 on the plot sheet where the sighter wound up. While the targets are being cleaned up, I make a decision on my sight settings for the upcoming rapid fire string and write them down here. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Ready on the firing line.
After firing the string of 10 shots, I write down any notes in this open section below the plot area. If I have nothing to say, I'll leave this blank, but most of the time something comes to mind, whether it was a position nuance, something I saw through the scope, or just a general feeling about sending the rounds downrange. When the targets are scored, I will plot the shot location using dots. The process of noting my sight settings, shooting the string, writing down notes, and plotting the shots is repeated for the second string. Once the stage is completed, I want to write down the most important piece of data on this line. Based on the conditions, my performance, and the group location, this is what I believe to be the correct no-win zero for this stage of fire. Finally, the overall size of each 10-shot group is recorded in these boxes. The first number is the horizontal extreme spread of the group. The second number is the vertical extreme spread. This has nothing to do with gaining zeros. Instead, I have been tracking my rapid-fire group sizes since 2008. It's just another metric that I use to judge my performance. Each piece of equipment in high-power rifle competition should be working to help you shoot the best score possible. Some of this gear may only have a slight effect on your performance. Others, such as a data book, are so important to my placement on the results sheet that I wouldn't think of leaving home without it. Good luck and good shooting.